What's up, dirt people? Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back. This is just going to be a quick snippet video, so I'm going to use it as an excuse to talk to you guys since only hardcore viewers are going to watch this probably. Um, I'll go into the evolution of the channel, where we're going next, and some off road shout outs if you guys want to join up later on. But for now, I'm going to explain where we've been with the drones. Most of the footage you guys have seen on the channel has been with these drones. Um, or version of this but whatever dji store-bought stuff this will cost you around sixteen hundred dollars i have like eight hundred dollars in battery so it, it gets up there but this will do you well uh of this is the type they'll go about 45 miles an hour max speed it's dependent on how much the gimbal can keep up with honestly sometimes i'm going i'm tracking and it just shutters and loses the shot or i can't keep up with the truck and i'll have to fly high you've seen some of those shots too um, this range, this controller with this modification is supposed to be able to get five miles. I've never tested that. Everything you're flying, you're watching here. So it's good for crawling and good for most of your other stuff. Great for pictures, but not fast enough for some of the high speed stuff. This was my last drone purchase. Um, it's a Cine X. It's by X Hover. These are all 3D printed parts. These are tough little drones that they take tons of beatings. These are upgraded props, no big deal, and you got to repair them. Um, that's the thing, when these things first started coming out, people had to be able to build them themselves. Now I just bought ready to fly kits and I just committed to learning how to repair them. Your GoPro goes snapped on here. Depending on battery, you'll get between four to seven minutes of battery life in these. These are really stable indoors because of the air ducts, but outdoors, breeze, a breeze catches them and pushes them around. So they're really good for getting close because I use these as prop guards um, just for like risky stuff. But yeah, I need to get different ones that are just prop guards. And you'll see, like, I have, you could do donuts with them. You could do some cinematic shots, but the wind pushes it around. You'll see them a little bit on the opening shots at the firing range. And th this is FPV standing for a first person view because you're looking out through the goggles as opposed to a screen right here. These controls, they fly really smooth of your beginner. You can get usable, not good, but you can get usable shots your first time out. If you freak out or something, you let go of the controls and the drone stays stationary. Depending on what setting you have it on, but most of the part, you're good when you release. These are different. These are constantly treading water. You let go of these, it's going to fall out of the sky. So constant micro adjustments. These are much more difficult to fly, but you learn quick. And then later on in the video, you're going to see this guy flying. This is what I try to use most of the time because it's smoother. It just gets you better angle. It, it's just more epic footage, I guess, if you want to call that. This is also from X Hover. This is the first FPV one I bought. And yeah, they just got these little board cams. It's all the same. Look, my bad soldering. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm learning as I go. So whatever. But yeah, these can go twice the speed of that, no problem. And same thing, fall out of the sky. You could use the same controller, same headset. So those will go for around 1600 bucks. You, you, I bought one used for like 900 actually, um, just to have as a backup because they were discontinued for a while. This setup cost me, controller, goggles, drone cost me around 1700. But when I bought this drone, I was able to integrate this system so i only had to buy this i think it was like six or seven hundred so uh, that's the thing you could you can't connect different dgi stuff to this so anytime you buy a different one of these you're gonna have to buy a whole setup so there is a benefit to this even though they're expensive we met up with ray hector and daniel just to go scout some shooting ranges and some trails after that Well, the GoPro is. So just as an intro, this is Daniel in his Gen 2 Ford Raptor. Uh, this video is not about that, so whatever. He's got some upgrades, uh, some cool stuff on it, but nothing crazy. You can tell the flying's a lot sloppier in the beginning as you see more clips. I'm actually trembling when I'm flying. Um, 
this could do double the speed easily of the other big phantom so i don't want to put it into somebody's truck or somebody's head at 90 miles an hour it takes me a few passes to get used to it and even like that you're still trembling you're trying to control and then look at those power lines this is some of my first chase shots the guys were nice enough to let me and i was you right here it's look at that it's getting fuzzy you can't see it on the goggles right especially when i'm flying low i'm out of range and i'm just going up and down and trying to thread it thread the needle with these power lines look how close i get also my camera angle is a little bit crappy i'll show you guys in a bit as soon as he stops what i mean there's a lot to learn i always mess it up So here's what I mean about camera angle. This is just a little board camera. It's in 1080p and it's so fish-eyed you catch propellers in the shot. So you gotta crop it if you wanna use it. It's good foot, it's decent footage, stabilized really well for what it is. And this is actually what you see out of the goggles. So what this is, is what you see out of there. This, the best way to mount it is try to mimic the angle that this thing has and then a little bit forward. You'll get better shots, but you'll see on some of the footage on the computer up there, the truck will be like on the screen up here. That's because that's what I mean by my angles off. So to, the faster you fly, this is going to tilt down further like that at a, at a 45 is about the max. So people that can fly really well, they'll tilt this camera all the way back at a 45. And you can't even land if you're not experienced because you can't see the ground. That means this camera has to go back also to adjust. It can only go so far back, whatever. But if you're flying fast, like I am on some of these shots and your angle isn't high enough because me, I'm unexperienced landing, especially in that video. Out of fear, I'll put it lower so I can land better so I can see the ground. So what that means is to catch up, I have to nosedive, punch it, and then straighten up for the shot and hopefully I coast something nice. So you'll see a lot of sloppy flying that most pilots wouldn't put out there, but I learn a lot from my errors and I like showing them for you. It's not just for you guys, it's for me. That's how I learn. Also battery, like right here I was chasing them and then I had to bail. It gives you a battery readout on the bottom left corner of the screen and you have to pay attention. The DJIs will start coming home and beeping and chiming and all that stuff. These will straight fall out of the sky. So you'll also get a good landing demo right here. This is why I have the timid camera angle because if I ruin the landing, I'll get dirt in the motors and it's game over. Uh, thanks, Ray. So now it's Hector's turn in his diesel ZR2 and yeah, you guys just saw me almost clip power lines again and that's what I meant by the angle of the camera. See, uh, he's at my top screen and then I catch up. It sucks. You know, I, I have to apologize for the footage, but look, you still get cool stuff, so I'm leaving it.
The only good thing about these drones is you learn fast and this is a trick I need to learn going back and forth to scrub speed to keep the trucks in frame because you guys have seen me I'll fly past them and I'll try to turn around just fast enough and it's a cool shot but it's not a good shot. And yeah, that rough landing got dirt in the motors. I didn't have anything to hose them out. So I'm done flying for this day. With this drone at least. But just to show you guys how fast you learn, this is also from a long time ago. Um, most of the same people, Ray, Hector, and this is Eris in his FJ Cruiser. But I'm just flying around, we're airing up. There wasn't much to this video, but you could see how much smoother I could fly. This is the five inch too, the one you saw the majority of footage. So they fly a lot smoother and sweepier. It's pretty cool. And I'm gonna attempt some tricks in a little bit and you could tell they're kind of sorry. I don't flip over at the right time. Like it's not smooth. I still need much more improvement before showing off tricks like that. But I'll leave them in so you guys can see the, the progress. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Only subscribers will probably view, so moving forward I'll be more casual with the snippet intros and outros. As far as channel updates go, the common content of truck or trail reviews and installs will still be the main focus. I always want to hinge on making myself useful for you guys. But the FPV footage allows me to bring you guys more drool bucket type footage as I get better. It's easier to edit and easier to record solo. I'm be following around and showcasing other like-minded groups as much as possible. And feel free to comment any random stuff on these videos. I'll also use them as shout outs to invite you guys or organize group runs on YouTube instead of just on Instagram. So leave a comment if you want to do a Christmas run, maybe a toy drive, whatever. All levels of experience are welcome. We'll tailor it to whatever vehicles want to show up. So thanks for watching and until next time. Keep learning new tricks, keep playing with new toys, and of course, keep it yeah. dirty. That'll hold your hand up. Ah, it's too sketchy. Why? I can't see it. I can only see what the camera sees.